What's up, everybody? And welcome to another edition of High Mythology, the show where we get higher than the Andes Mountains and uh, tell you guys silly stories from mythology and folklore. Uh, today's story, we will be bringing you a little bit of uh, south of the border folklore again with the tale of a little bit. Just I'm a chilly. little bit chilly. A little chilly. Chilean folklore for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hope it's not too spicy. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, starting it off on a bad joke. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Without uh, further ado, Kimbo, go ahead and take it away. All right. So we learn to tell it, and we tell it to teach it. Tell it to teach it, motherfucker. Mm. There was once a needy couple, miserable in every way. And the husband was a water carrier, and his wife took in laundry. But as, uh, as hard as they worked, the money that they earned barely kept them from starving to death. That's pretty deep. That's, that's yeah. We're hitting it with some fucking poverty right off the bat here. <laughs> Shit's hard all <laughs> over. <clears throat> One night, when they were talking, the wife says, How poor we are. So, so alone, all alone. If at least we had a child, even if it was just a little bit of a thing, I mean, it it could probably help us get through some rough stuff, maybe pay off some of the loans that we're running behind on, or things like that. Trim the grass, maybe. There'd be someone to talk to in the evenings, and someone to wash my toes right in between them, because my toes, they get really dirty in the middle. (laughs) The old husband replies, How true, but what is the use of wishing? And at that, a voice came booming down from the roof. You shall have the child you wish. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) The two old couple uh, looked at each other, stupefied, and said, Goodness, it's getting to be late. We better be off to bed. The next day, as usual, they got up at dawn, and the old man left. <laughs> God just yelled at me through my roof. Oh, goodness! I must be tired. Oh, fuck this, I'm out. I'm out, I must go to sleep. I'm clearly hallucinating now. The old man left to haul water for his customers, and his wife started scrubbing the clothes. No sooner had she begun her work than she felt something wiggling in her blouse. She thought to herself that Uh it must be a lizard or something. (laughs) There's a lizard in my blouse. And she shook her right arm, and something fell out into the wash tub. She couldn't see what it was, but she heard a squeaky little voice saying, Mama, pick me up out of the water before I drown. (laughs) Mama. (laughs) The poor old soul uh, strained her eyes. And saw a baby boy so tiny he was nearly invisible, bobbing up and down in the soapy water. She caught him at once, and then she and her little or her old husband brought him up, showering him with all kinds of love and attention. They called him Little Bit, and the name Bit because he was no bigger than your little finger. (laughs) Woo! (laughs) Nice. (laughs) He grew, but not in size, only in strength. And when he shouted. His voice was louder than any other man's. No one suspected the old couple were raising a child. He was so pretty, they kept him well hidden for fear someone would steal him. Keep him in my pocket. (laughs) My pocket kid. The Polly pocket. (laughs) Polly pocket. Uh, He was all their comfort and entertainment and their consolation in life. I want to see him fight Ethan (laughs) Bushi. They're related, I'm sure. They're related. There's, there's got to only be one family of pinky-sized people. No, no, right. Seven years went by, and the old parents became so feeble they couldn't work anymore, and their meager savings came to an end. When there was nothing left but 30 cents, the old laundress said to Little Bit, Nino, take these 10 cents and go to the butcher. <laughs> Bring me back some meat, and not just like any meat. I want some good cuts of steak, something nice. Maybe some tripe. I could use some tripe. Wow. Little bit arrived at the butcher's shop and tapped on the counter. The butcher looked around but saw no one and yelled out, <laughs> It is I, Little Bit. Yep, 
Nope. Sorry. You're Sorry. a butcher. R- wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. Little bit's balls dropped. <laughs> <laughs> Who is tapping? A little bit arrived at the butcher shop. Oh, sorry. Uh, now I'm fucking bad. With the big voice that startled the butcher, Little Bit said, It is I, Little Bit. Give me ten cents of meat scraps, or else I will come at you with the full fury that you could never expect. <laughs> the butcher heaped the scraps onto the counter, and with effort uh, managed to see a tiny man holding a coin scarcely six inches off the floor. He pondered and asked, And how will you carry ten cents of meat scrap? What are you, what you're ordering is, is bigger than you. You're, I'm not even going to start asking questions about where you came from, strange little man. Little Bit just huffed and said, Sir, be serious. If you sold me a whole steer, I'd be able to carry it. I'm that fucking jacked. The butcher shrugged it, yet said, Oh, very, very well. Give me the ten cents, and you can have that steer hanging up in the window. (laughs) (laughs) Little Bit took the butcher at his word, threw the steer over his shoulder, and ran off. Oh, yeah. The butcher just stood there with his mouth open at the sight (laughs) of a steer traveling down the street upside down. People crossed themselves. No one could see Little Bit. He was under the carcass. (laughs) I like to imagine this is the scene where you get the <laughs> alcoholic sitting on the side of the road who just pours out his bottle. I'm it's like, done. I'm done. <laughs> I've had enough. <laughs> uh, delighted with their son's purchase, the old parents sent him off to buy five cents of bread. Little Bit walked into the bakery and tapped on the counter. Hey, who's that tapping there? Little Bit had a voice like thunder called out. It is I, little bit. Give me five cents of bread. The baker leaned over the counter and could hardly believe what he saw. He said, Hey, and how are you going to carry away this five cents of bread? Hmm? I like that there's an Italian person in hey, Chile. Hey, I'm an That's Italian person nice. down here in Chile. Just trying to make <laughs> my bread. <laughs> nice. I would imagine he's making tortellini. He's pasta. making tortellini. <laughs> I'm here for the spaghetti. Breadery. I come to Chile and I make a spaghetti. A breadery. A bakery. Spaghetti. Wow. A breadery. A <laughs> uh, little bit was almost appalled at the question <laughs> and said, How? How? The same as any other customer. You could sell me that big bread basket on the counter there and you'd see me carry it off. I am straight fucking jacked. You can't see the muscle definition because of my size, but it's fucking there. The baker shrugs, thinking he can get an easy five cents, and says, Hey, uh, give me the five cents, then. And a little bit replies, Here, take it, and please put the basket on my shoulders. The baker lowered the basket slowly, worrying that he might crush his tiny customer. But the moment Little Bit felt the load touch his shoulders, oh, yeah. he was out the door. And the Get baker some. watched in amazement as the basket went gliding down the street. Get some! <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> That's the alcoholic coming out of alcoholic Anonymous feeling good. And then he sees the basket and starts drinking again. <laughs> uh, the parents greeted their son joyfully. And immediately they sat down for a full meal. First one in months. Oh, damn. Then the old woman says, Let's just slice enough of this steer for a couple of days, maybe. Uh, tomorrow I'll make jerky. Some nice jerky. Maybe peppered, maybe teriyaki jerky. I do like a good teriyaki. I don't think they know China yet. It'll keep us in beef forever. Like, literally forever we'll have this beef. <laughs> uh, they chatted on contently. And that night, the old woman says, I know I'm kind of starting to sound a little needy, but uh, who would mind a sip of tea? Then the little bit says to his mother, Mother, give me ten cents, and I'll get you five cents of sugar and five cents of tea herb. The old woman shrugs and says, Go ahead and take it, child. I mean, I've got just all these cents lying around. (laughs) Little bit arrived at the corner grocery, tapping on the counter. And the grocer came out. Who's tapping? <sighs> Little bit instantly replies with almost anger. 
I am fucking little bit. I'd like five cents of sugar and five goddamn cents of tear, grocer man. The grocer leaned over the counter and said, But, but child, uh, how could you carry it? <laughs> A little bit huffs again and says, Ugh. It's not your problem, uh, sir. <laughs> <laughs> If you would like to give me a case of sugar and a barrel of herb and watch me carry the whole thing without any help, I'll fucking do it, just to prove you wrong. If you want to fight in the alley, we can do that, too. The grocer just shrugs and says, I don't want to fight with you. Well, well, pass me ten cents and take the case and the barrel. A little bit smirks a bit and says, Here's the ten cents. Would you die the case to the barrel? The storekeeper rolled his eyes, but filled the order just the same. Then stood speechless as the case and the barrel sped through the door and down the street. You can imagine how happy the old people were when they saw this precious cargo coming in. No more dying of hunger. What else could they wish for? (laughs) The alcoholic moved straight to opium. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck it, why not, right? (laughs) Might as well have seen all sorts of shit walking by. Seeing shit no matter what I do. They all took a deep draught of the tea and went back uh, went to bed. The next day, the old woman jerked the steer meat, and when she was done, <laughs> she said to no one in particular, <laughs> If only we had a few onions to go with all of this jerky. I mean, this I could make a good Valdiviano. <laughs> in case you don't know what that is, that's a Chilean dish, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Stewed meat. It's stewed, a Chilean stewed, stewed meat stewed dish. jerky meat. I don't know why I'm onions. explaining this to myself it's also, using. but I like to think aloud. A little bit overheard and replies to his mother. <laughs> mother, isn't there only five cents left? Let me have it. I'll get the onions and a pack of Virginia Slims for you. She gave him the five and he was out the door. As he headed for the street, he noticed one of those miniature pen knives people wear as trinkets. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm imagining like the golden hand. Yeah, like, like the little hand, hand of the king yeah. symbol. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like pin sword. He picked it up and dropped it into his money bag. He had Door. gone but a f- <laughs> he had gone but a few more steps when he came to a farmer with a load of onions in two heavy saddle bags, one on each side of his horse. Little bit yells at him. Five cents worth of it. Oh, sorry, I got ahead of myself. That's why I'm, that doesn't make sense for him to just yell it at the guy like that. <laughs> <laughs> Hear me, friend. Sell me five cents of those onions. The farmer looks around but couldn't see the customer. Oh, oh God. He was hidden in the tall grass at the edge of the pavement. Again, little bit repeated. Five cents worth of fucking onions, man. How hard is it? <laughs> and as soon as he had the words, uh, left his mouth, a cow came by eating the grass, and Little Bit found himself inside Moo. the cow's stomach. But he kept on hollering from inside the cow. <laughs> Five cents for some onions, motherfucker. Uh, My mother is waiting. The farmer scratched his head and kept looking around. Who would know that a voice like that could come from a cow? I should have never started smoking that opium. (laughs) Now, it wasn't until that he had been completely swallowed that Little Bit realized what had happened to him. But he wasn't afraid. He took his penknife out of his money bag and carved his way to freedom. (laughs) The poor cow. (laughs) Hardly clean, but safe and sound. The cow, meanwhile, fell over dead. (laughs) <laughs> Little bit took hold of it by its tail and dragged it home. I like to imagine the fucking farmer just sitting there, and he's really just like, okay, I swear to God, I just heard a voice. <laughs> the heat's getting. And then I heard there. something come out of that cow. I need to take a minute under the shade to take a For break. Real. And he's sitting there, and he just sees like aliens. Like the cow just sits up, and a little fucking. Bleh, bleh. <laughs> little fucking just little bit right crawls out. out, just covered in blood. I said onions. <laughs> uh. So after the cow fell over dead, he dragged it home and told himself, No, this will make fine jerky. <laughs> His parents uh, bathed him and gave him a change of clothes, and then he ran back to the farmer, shouting, How about it, friend? Can I get five cents of onions or what? 
The farmer finally spotted him and said, Oh my fucking God. Oh, fuck. Oh, I thought I was losing my shit. Uh, ooh, I apologize. Uh, that'd be half a dozen onions, little guy. Uh, those would crush you. <laughs> little bit just smiles at him and says, You're dreaming, friend. Take five cents for both your saddlebags and that pack of Virginia Slims and fucking watch me, bro. An easy five cents, thought the farmer, and he took the money, <laughs> then dropped his jaw as he watched his saddlebags and all of his onions <laughs> and Virginia Pit Slims oh, fuck. disappear down the street. It wasn't long before Little Bit's fame had spread through the whole country and the king was asking to see him. Since the capital was not close by, Little Bit needed a horse. So he caught a mouse and trained it. <laughs> Fuck yeah, he did. That's some Stuart Little shit right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, Stuart Little was the mouse, with fairness. So you can't really tame your I guess brothers, that's right? That's a good point. Go to he made a bridle, a bridle, excuse me, and the stirrups a bridle bridle. from a hairpin. <laughs> he cut his saddle from an old kidskin glove. Kidskin? Yeah. Yeah, they used to make uh, gloves out of the skin of children. That's what I thought. No, as a kid, kids are baby goats. Okay. I know. <laughs> the reins and the rest of the harness from a shoestring. For his sword, he hung that little pen knife from his belt with an open <laughs> blade. Then he jumped onto his mount and was off to the city. I've killed a cow with this sword. <laughs> when he arrived, he was suddenly the toast of the town. The king, the queen, the princes, and the princesses, and all the grandees and dames of the court ran all after him. All of the him. dames. All of them. He was certified as the chief wonder of the realm, and the king found a spot for him next to the throne. But Little Bit explained to him that he couldn't stay, and his parents were so old and, and in misery. I must tend to my mother. He would have to return to them, for without his support they would surely die. That's a good son right there. The king loved to hear that and said, Such a good son. Bring your old parents to us and we'll give them everything they need. Wow, the king is yeah, that yeah, one, huh? yeah, kings are always weird. And in short order, <laughs> they were all together in the palace. When the king's enemy declared war, Little Bit pushed the artillery to the field of battle, <laughs> and with his roaring voice, he shouted all the orders from the general. Kill them, kill them all, bathe in the blood of your enemies. Where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> so he, had, he shouted the orders from the general to the front of the line. Yeah. And for his services, he was decorated with medals and ribbons and given the rank of field commander. He just lived a little fucking medal of honor. <laughs> just just, just, just trawling around. The, what is that? Oh, that's a little bit. Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> he lived out the rest of his days, loved and honored throughout the kingdom. Oh, the end. The end. Little bit. Enjoy. Yeah. I By like Manuel that little guy. Manuel Oporto. Manuel Oporto. I like that. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. like that a lot. Uh, I, it's a lot like Isunbushi, very similar. If you heard mm -hmm. our Isunbushi episode, it's a lot like that, but less Japanese. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a little bit, though. Uh, burly motherfucker. I wouldn't fuck with him. Now, the story's <laughs> actually traveled everywhere. Yeah, that's uh, right. You were saying early, uh, it comes from Tom Thumb, mm -hmm. which, uh, because we like these little people stories a lot you could probably expect tom thumb to be well, in your future at some point yeah, yeah it's uh, kind of more disturbing to yeah me. tom thumb gets pooped out a lot a lot he gets he doesn't cut his way out of anything he just gets shat out <laughs> yeah. that's pretty fucking yeah. and after spending a week in the intestinal tract of a horse i had some time to think about things <laughs> Mom's just searching through every fucking pile of shit. <laughs> Exactly. I lost my son. Have you checked the shits lately? No? No, thank you. No. Yeah, but this uh, particular story you can find in Chile, the Dominican Republic, New Mexico, Panama, Puerto Rico, Europe, India, and Middle East. Yeah, yeah. This particular one. Yeah, it, uh, it travels all over. Um, yeah, our source uh, for this story... Latin American folk tales, uh, aside from all of the oh, OGs sorry. that Kim mentioned, Latin American folk tales, stories from Hispanic and Indian traditions, written with an introduction, edited with an introduction by John Beerhorst, very German name for Latin American. Yeah. I'll hold it up so you folks can see a picture of it. Good book. 
check it out uh, sometime. It's a fun, fun one if you're into folk tales and whatnot. They also do have a few that you're just like, what? Yeah. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah. If, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube right now, also, please, in the comments, let us know what you think. Or on Facebook. Let us know what you think about the video, pictures, that kind of stuff. Trying to do some new stuff a little bit. Yeah. So, hope you folks enjoy it. Hope you enjoyed our faces this time. Yeah, you get to see our faces. You get to see the stupid faces I make when I do all those voices. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, <laughs> by the way, I can't do the king voice without constantly raising a finger like a cartoon guy. Or his Cobra cry. <laughs> Or my cope. Yeah. One we must fence a television. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Ban everything. Ah! So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Enjoy. Like, like subscribe, share. share, share it with your friends. Yeah. Tell people. Tell people. Bury take a keep a keep a VHS copy and bury it in a time capsule. Why not? I don't know. I don't know if that works to get word around, but <laughs> we'll try anything, right? <laughs> He will. Uh, I'll try anything. Cut me out. Cut me out. <laughs> yeah. And this is where we go into split screen <laughs> mode. <laughs> All righty, folks. Uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. Good night. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs>